uh, what, what sort of lessons do you think India's insurance sector, which in some ways is, is still just getting going, um, should learn from the financial crisis in the U.S. And, and what happened to insurers there? Well, the financial crisis, the big lesson from the financial crisis for those who are in the investment world, or, and this applies whether you're in India or Germany or any place in the world, is that people occasionally go crazy, you know, in, as a group. And you had, the, you had the tulip mania, and you know, in the early 1600s and the Netherlands. People, people are capable. They, they love the idea of of getting rich, and if they see their neighbor getting rich from doing something, and they think they're smarter than the, their neighbor, and he happens to be buying, in our in the, case, in the United States, he happened to be buying single-family homes and borrowing the limit on them and refinancing them as he went along to sustain consumption, and then they see prices continue to rise, so they get this proof back from the market, they get this feedback. Uh, eventually, the whole country goes crazy, and it's very hard to resist a craze. I mean, we had an internet craze in the, you know, uh, 10 years earlier, and we will have them again. We had a uranium craze, I mean, back, you know, when I was in my 20s. At, uh, uh, so that's going to happen periodically. The humans are susceptible to wanting to believe that, you know, that something that's happened recently is going to continue and that they're going to get rich based on it, and particularly uh, when it's gone on for some time. The 1920s, we had a a somewhat similar phenomenon where that uh, people discovered common stocks for the first time, really, the American public. And, and originally it was a sound premise. American businesses are pretty good things to buy, but they're not pretty good things to buy at any price. And houses are pretty good things to buy. In fact, it makes sense for people to buy houses, uh, but one they can afford and with payments they can make. Because, and, uh, but it doesn't make sense to start paying you know, twice replacement value and borrowing 90-some percent of it and lying about your income and all those sort of things that come along. It looks like it makes sense for a while because it does work, and then all of a sudden the music stops. It's, it's a little like Cinderella at the ball, you know. I mean, Cinderella went the ball, and she knew at midnight, you know, it was all going to turn to pumpkins and mice. But it was so much fun. You know, I mean, the music is good, and the boys look better, and, you know, the drinks flow. And, you know, at... You don't want to miss out on it. It's getting better all the time, so you think, I'm going to leave it three minutes to 12. But the trouble is there are no clocks on the wall. It doesn't tell you when it's three minutes to 12, and everybody else is thinking they're going to leave then. And then you, the music stops, and everything turns to pumpkins and mice. And, and investors have to be able to detach themselves from those emotionally and, and temperamentally from that tendency to go along with crowd behavior. I mean. Anytime you buy a stock, if you're going to buy 100 shares of Microsoft at 26, or whatever it's selling for, and there are eight or nine billion shares out, that means you're going to pay $200 billion for the company. Now, you're only going to buy 100 shares, but I suggest that you get out a yellow pad and you write, I am buying the Microsoft company for $200 billion because, and if you can write a sensible essay on why you're, it doesn't have to be very long, a few, few lines will do. If you can say why it's sensible to buy the company for 200 billion, then you can say why it's sensible to buy 100 shares at 26. And if you can't say that, forget it. Because you all you're doing is betting on, you know, what some hunch somebody has or what somebody said that day on television or something of the sort. You are buying a business when you buy a share of stock. And you have to be right about the business to be right about the stock. And you're not going to be right because people agree with you. You're not going to be right because people disagree with you. You're not going to be right because somebody prestigiously, uh, has been in a prestigious position, says that it's the thing to do. You're going to be right if you're right about the business. And that simple little activity will focus you on what you're really doing. When I, say, when I bought that farm, I said, I am buying a farm in Burt County, Nebraska at $700 an acre because and I put the because, I think it will produce so many acres, so many bushels an acre of corn, so many bushels an acre of soybean, and I need to, will need to pay the tenant farmer so much, I need to pay so much in taxes, when I get all through, I will have about $80 an acre coming in, and I'm paying a little less than $700 an acre, and that's fine, that's gonna work if I'm right. And the same thing applies to stocks, the same thing applies to buying an apartment house and renting it out. Uh, you have to go through that discipline.